Using the data viewer in your data flow task can be one of the great feelings of working with SSIS. I know that kind of sounds silly, but as a developer in SSIS, you often get beat down. You get so frustrated with all the errors and the warnings and the workarounds. I, I love SSIS, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, but you really do have to do a lot of those things. And the previous video in this chapter was all about how to use a fake destination uh, to get around some of the difficulties of developing in SSIS, just as an example. And so the data viewers are a great debugging tool. They are a wonderful tool that you need to use often and if you're not using them then other SSIS developers would look at you and think man why are you doing it that way why not just add a data viewer it's just so easy so here's what I'm gonna do um, uh, I'll do the same thing if you watch the previous video uh, in this particular section on using the fake destination. I'm just going to recreate that. Uh, if you did not watch the previous video on doing the fake destination, um, then I'm going to go be going a little bit fast for you. Uh, so 1998, I, I'm just trying to remember all the things we used. And I think we just had this. And so uh, we put this on the root of the C. We call it vendors.txt. So there is our source file. And we talked about in the last video, let me launch Visual Studio, we talked about creating that trash destination. So I'm going to create a new project and just an integration services project. And I'm going to drag the data flow on here. So drag this come over here add my flat file source let that make a new uh, file connection manager to my source file that I just created in the text file vendors.txt column names in the first row um, and, and just leave the defaults here nothing uh, too special here um, so I've got my basic flat file source if I seem to go a little bit fast go watch the previous video in this chapter we went much slower uh, for that um, and then we talked about using the, under the data flow transformations, we talked about using the row count as our fake slash foe slash trash destination. And to do that, I have to make a variable. So I right click in the environment, go to variables, click the little add variable button, give it a name, make sure it is of a type int32, go to a row count, and just choose it in the variable name. Okay, there's your syntax right there if you wanted to just type it in. Now again, I'm going fast because we just spent 10 minutes in the prior video doing this. So if you want me to slow down and explain that um, and go ahead and run this and get green, um, then watch that previous video. The problem with running this, and I've got my fake destination here, so fake destination. The problem with running this is all I get to see is that two rows were consumed or were sent from the source to the fake destination. I might want to see what the values of those rows are. That's where the data viewer comes in. You right click on your transformation, you go to data viewers, and here we are. I just It's really just a kind of a next, next, next finish type of a deal. You go add. I'm interested in a grid type. You might have many times where you're looking at histograms, charts, plots. You need a lot more data than two rows for that to be interesting. Uh, so I'm just going to choose a grid. Say OK. You can see the little icon here. looks like uh, little glasses on top of the little view icon. And when I hit F5 to execute that, this is the data viewer. And we can actually see what the data is. And we can sort within here. Um, the detach or the play, this is basically the continue. Uh, behind the scenes, SSIS has paused. So it is waiting for me to say either go, 
which is detach would allow me to look at this while the rest of the package completes or continues and the same thing with the play right here um, right now it's kind of paused if we hit play it basically says continue but allows me to still look at what that particular data was so the data viewer is awesome you can copy the data and paste it into Excel or whatever you need to the I'm going to show you here a couple of things about the data viewer um, the data viewer can really really help if you're getting validation warnings or if you're looking at your destination and you are seeing why is the sort why is the destination coming over as this type of data I'm gonna give you an example here um, I'm, I'm going to do something without really explaining it. Um, I will explain it in the next video. The idea of the next video is all about the suggest types and dealing with DB date versus DB date time, um, or, or rather date DT underscore date versus DT underscore DB date time. But I'm going to just make a change and just show you something. So I'm going to go here and change you to db date and run this now and you can take a look now that nothing changed and you might be scratching your head well it's all in this little yellow icon here okay so come back over here and again I'm making a change all I'm going to do is double click and say yes okay I'm not really telling you why or how the next video I will promise but what I can see now is because of the change I made and because I have a data viewer, I can see that it has, it being SSIS, it has changed the data type. And so what would actually get consumed by the real destination, once we swap out the fake destination for the real one, would be this particular data and not the source data. And I can change those types of things at will. I'm going to, again, do something without telling you. Uh, what exactly I'm doing? I'm I'm going to go over here and change it from DB date to DB timestamp, um, and double click and say yes, okay. Again, I will show you that in the next video. I promise. I'm just kind of trying to make you understand how helpful the data viewer is in this video. So I'm just kind of focusing on that. But now, once I've done that, you can see I get a different set for the date. So that data viewer allows you to step through code. It allows you to take a look at what's going on in your package at what particular point so that you can actually see the data and what happens to it. So they're just they're so useful. They take almost no thought to put into a package as well. They're just so easy.